I smoothed my dress and plastered on a smile as I stepped into Ruth's backyard. The baby shower decorations sparkled in the afternoon sun, but my stomach churned with dread. I was late, and I knew Eric would be annoyed. There you are, Ruth's voice rang out. We were starting to worry. I hugged my daughter, my hand resting on her swollen belly. Sorry, sweetheart. The salon was crazy today. Ruth's eyes twinkled. No worries, Mom. There's someone here who's been asking about you. Before I could respond, a familiar voice called out, Surprise, Annabelle. Guess who's joined us? I turned, my heart pounding. There stood Bethany, my best friend since college, grinning from ear to ear. But it wasn't her unexpected presence that made my blood run cold. It was the man standing next to her, his arm draped possessively around her waist. Eric, my husband. Bethany, I managed, my voice barely above a whisper. What a surprise. She rushed forward, enveloping me in a hug. Oh, Annabelle, it's been too long. I have so much to tell you. I stood frozen as she pulled back, her hand resting on a slight bump beneath her flowing dress. My eyes darted between her and Eric, who avoided my gaze. Eric and I have some exciting news, Bethany gushed. We're having a baby. The world tilted on its axis. I gripped the nearby table for support, knocking over a stack of pastel plates. Mom? Ruth's concerned voice broke through the fog. Are you okay? I forced a smile. Just a little dizzy. Must be the heat. Eric finally met my eyes, his expression a mix of defiance and guilt. Annabelle, we need to talk. Not here, I hissed, glancing around at the curious faces of our friends and family. Bethany's smile faltered. Is everything all right? I couldn't bear to look at her. My best friend, the godmother to my children. How long had this been going on? Excuse me, I mumbled, pushing past them and heading for the house. Eric followed me inside, closing the door behind us. Annabelle, I can explain. I whirled on him, fury replacing shock. Explain? Explain how you've been sleeping with my best friend? How you're having a baby with her? He held up his hands. It's not what you think. Bethany doesn't know we're still married. I laughed bitterly. And that makes it better? How long, Eric? How long have you been lying to both of us? He ran a hand through his hair, frustration evident. It just happened. I ran into her at a conference six months ago, and things escalated. Six months, I repeated, the betrayal cutting deep. While I've been working myself to the bone, trying to save our marriage, you've been. A knock at the door interrupted us. Ruth poked her head in, concern etched on her face. Mom? Dad? Is everything okay? I plastered on another fake smile. Everything's fine, sweetheart. Your father and I just need a moment. Ruth hesitated, her eyes darting between us. Are you sure? You both look upset. Eric stepped forward, his charm sliding back into place. Don't worry, princess. Just a little misunderstanding. We'll be right out. As soon as the door closed, I turned back to Eric. This ends now. You go out there and tell Bethany the truth, or I will. His eyes hardened. You wouldn't dare. Think about what that would do to Ruth's party. To our family. Our family? I scoffed. You gave up the right to talk about our family when you decided to start a new one with my best friend. Eric grabbed my arm, his grip painfully tight. Listen to me, Annabelle. If you say anything, you'll regret it. Think about the scandal, the gossip. Is that what you want? I wrenched my arm free, shock and anger coursing through me. Don't you dare threaten me, Eric. This is far from over. With that, I stormed out of the house, leaving Eric behind. As I stepped back into the sunlight, I locked eyes with Bethany across the yard. Her smile faltered, sensing the tension. In that moment, I knew nothing would ever be the same again. I couldn't sleep that night, tossing and turning as memories of happier times haunted me. The next morning I dragged myself to the salon, hoping work would distract me from the mess my life had become. "'You look like hell, sweetie,' Mom said as I stumbled in. "'Rough night?' I nodded, fighting back tears. "'You have no idea.' She studied my face, concern etched in her features. What's going on, Annabelle? Did something happen at Ruth's shower? Before I could answer, the bell chimed. Eric sauntered in, all charm and smiles. Good morning, ladies. Annabelle, can we talk? Mom's eyes darted between us. I'll give you two a moment, she said, retreating to the back room. I crossed my arms, glaring at Eric. What do you want? He leaned close, lowering his voice. I need you to keep quiet about Bethany, just for a little while. Are you kidding me? I hissed. You want me to pretend everything's fine while you play happy families with my best friend? Eric's eyes hardened. Think about Ruth. 
Do you really want to ruin her pregnancy with all this drama? I faltered, torn between my anger and concern for our daughter. Eric pressed his advantage. Just give me some time to figure things out, for Ruth's sake. Before I could respond, Mom reappeared. Everything okay out here? Eric flashed his winning smile. Just fine, Gwen. I was telling Annabelle about a business trip next week. I'll be gone for a few days. My stomach churned. A few days alone with Bethany, no doubt. As Eric left, Mom turned to me. Honey, what's really going on? I opened my mouth to tell her everything, but Eric's words about Ruth echoed in my mind. It's... complicated, I said finally. I'll explain later. The day dragged on, each client reminding me of happier times. Mrs. Johnson gushed about her grandson's wedding, while I wondered if my own marriage had been a sham from the start. As I swept up hair clippings, my phone buzzed. A text from Bethany. Lunch tomorrow? We need to catch up. My hand shook as I replied, agreeing to meet. I had to know the truth, no matter how much it hurt. That night, I found myself digging through old photo albums. There we were, Eric, Bethany, and me, arms linked on graduation day. Young, carefree, and impossibly close, a photo slipped out, landing face down on the floor. I picked it up, my breath catching. It was from my wedding day, Eric and I kissing, while Bethany beamed beside us as maid of honor. Anger surged through me. How dare they destroy everything we had? I stormed into our bedroom, where Eric was packing for his business trip. How long? I demanded. He looked up, startled. What? I thrust the wedding photo in his face. How long have you been sleeping with Bethany? Eric's face darkened. I told you, it just happened recently. Why can't you let it go? Let it go? I laughed bitterly. You're having a baby with her. Eric, did our vows mean nothing to you? He slammed his suitcase shut. Oh, please, like you're so innocent. Always working late, never having time for me. What was I supposed to do? I recoiled as if slapped. So this is my fault because I was building a career? Eric's voice dripped with disdain. Pregnancy isn't an excuse to be lazy, Annabelle. Some of us have real jobs to do. Something snapped inside me. I grabbed the nearest object, a framed photo of us, and hurled it at the wall. It shattered, glass flying everywhere. Eric's eyes widened in shock, then narrowed dangerously. He grabbed my arm, fingers digging in painfully. You need to calm down, he growled. I wrenched away, heart pounding. Don't touch me, I spat. Get out, now. For a moment I thought he might refuse. Then, without a word, he grabbed his suitcase and stormed out. As the front door slammed, I sank to the floor, surrounded by broken glass and shattered memories. Tears streamed down my face as the full weight of betrayal crashed over me. But beneath the pain, a spark of determination flickered to life. I wouldn't let Eric destroy me. Somehow I'd find the strength to fight back. Tomorrow's lunch with Bethany loomed large in my mind. One way or another, I'd get to the bottom of this mess and reclaim my dignity in the process. I woke up with a knot in my stomach, dreading my lunch with Bethany. As I got ready, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off. Call it women's intuition or just paranoia, but I decided to do some digging before meeting her. I rifled through Eric's dresser, searching for any clue that might shed light on his deception. That's when I found them a pair of pink, wireless headphones tucked beneath his socks. My heart sank. I'd given those to Bethany for her birthday last year. My phone buzzed with a text from Bethany. Can't wait to see you. Lots to catch up on. I typed back a quick reply, postponing our lunch. I needed answers, and I needed them now. When Eric came home that evening, I was waiting. Care to explain these? I asked, dangling the headphones in front of him. His face paled. Where did you get those? Does it matter? They're Bethany's, aren't they? Eric's expression hardened. You've been snooping through my things? I laughed bitterly. That's rich, coming from you. How long has this really been going on, Eric? And don't you dare lie to me again. He ran a hand through his hair, frustration evident. Fine. It's been about a year. Happy now? The room spun. A year. While I'd been working overtime to support our family, he'd been sneaking around with my best friend. Why? I choked out. Why her? Why throw away everything we built? Eric's eyes flashed with anger. Because she doesn't nag me constantly. She doesn't make me feel like a failure every time I come home. I never. Save it, he snapped. You've been so wrapped up in your precious salon, you barely noticed me anymore. Bethany actually listens. She supports me. Rage boiled inside me. And I suppose lying to her about still being married is your way of supporting her? 
Eric's face darkened. He grabbed my arm, fingers digging in painfully. If you breathe a word of this to Bethany, I swear. I wrenched away, heart pounding. You'll what? Hit me? Go ahead. Give me another reason to leave your sorry ass. For a moment, I thought he might actually do it. Then he deflated, sinking onto the bed. This is such a mess, he muttered. You think? I spat. You ruined everything. Our marriage, my friendship with, Be with Bethany, our family. He looked up sharply. You can't tell Ruth. It would destroy her. I laughed humorlessly. Oh, now you care about our daughter? Where was that concern when you were screwing my best friend? Eric stood, looming over me. I'm warning you, Annabelle. If you keep prying, you'll regret it. Think about Ruth. Think about the scandal. A chill ran down my spine. This wasn't the man I married. The Eric I knew would never threaten me. Get out, I whispered. What? Get out, I screamed, shoving him towards the door. I can't even look at you right now. Eric's eyes narrowed. Fine, but this isn't over. We need to figure out how to handle this, discreetly. As soon as he left, I collapsed on the bed, sobs racking my body. How had my life fallen apart so completely? When the tears finally subsided, a steely resolve took their place. I couldn't let Eric control the narrative any longer. It was time to take matters into my own hands. I picked up my phone, fingers hovering over Bethany's number. She deserved to know the truth, no matter how much it hurt. But as I was about to call, another text from her popped up. Everything okay? You've seemed off lately. I'm worried about you. My throat tightened. Despite everything, a part of me still cared for Bethany. Could I really shatter her world like this? I set the phone down, mind racing. I needed a plan, one that would expose Eric's lies without destroying everyone I loved in the process. As I stared at the pink headphones on the bed, a dangerous idea began to form. It was risky, maybe even a little crazy. But if it worked, I could finally reclaim control of my life and protect the people I cared about. Tomorrow, I decided. Tomorrow, I'd set things in motion. And God help Eric when I did. I woke up the next morning with a renewed sense of purpose. No more tears. No more self-pity. It was time to take action. First order of business. Document everything. I grabbed my phone and started snapping pictures of Bethany's headphones, Eric's text messages, anything that could prove his infidelity. My hands shook as I worked, but I pressed on. Next, I called my bank. I need to open a separate account, I told the teller, my voice steadier than I felt, one that my husband can't access. As I hung up, a text from Eric flashed across my screen. We need to talk. Coming home early. Panic surged through me. I wasn't ready to face him yet. I needed more time, more evidence. Without thinking, I dialed my dad's number. Honey, his warm voice answered. Everything okay? I broke down, spilling everything. Eric's affair, the baby, his threats. Dad listened silently, then said, Come over. Now. I threw some clothes in a bag and raced to my parents' house. Mom and Dad were waiting on the porch, concern etched on their faces. Oh, sweetheart, Mom said, pulling me into a hug. We're here for you. Dad's expression was thunderous. I'll kill him, he growled. No, Dad, I said firmly. I need to handle this myself. We spent the afternoon strategizing. Mom, ever practical, insisted I see a lawyer. You need to protect yourself and your assets, she urged. As evening fell, my phone buzzed incessantly with calls and texts from Eric. I ignored them all. You can't avoid him forever, Dad said gently. What's your plan? I took a deep breath. I'm going to sell the house. Mom gasped. Are you sure? I nodded. It's the only way. I need a fresh start, away from all the memories. The next morning I met with a real estate agent. I need to sell my house urgently, I told her, my voice filled with determination. She looked skeptical. These things take time, Mrs. Thompson, and don't you need your husband's signature? I swallowed hard. He'll sign. Trust me. As I left the agent's office, my phone rang. It was Bethany. My stomach churned as I answered. Annabelle? Her voice was small, uncertain. I really need to talk to you. Can we meet? I closed my eyes, torn between my anger and our years of friendship. Okay, I said finally. Coffee shop on Main in an hour. Bethany was already there when I arrived, nervously fidgeting with her cup. She looked up, her eyes red-rimmed. I'm so sorry, she blurted out. I didn't know, I swear I didn't know he was still married. I sat down heavily, the weight of her words sinking in. Tell me everything, I said. As Bethany spoke, painting a picture of Eric's elaborate web of lies, my resolve strengthened. This wasn't just about me anymore. 
It was about protecting Bethany, her unborn child, and my own future. What are you going to do? Bethany asked, her voice trembling. I met her gaze steadily. I'm leaving him, and I think you should too. She nodded, tears spilling down her cheeks. I'm so sorry, Annabelle. Can you ever forgive me? Before I could answer, my phone buzzed. A text from Eric. Where are you? We need to talk now. I showed Bethany the message, watching her face pale. He doesn't know we're together, does he? She whispered. An idea sparked in my mind. Dangerous, perhaps, but potentially game-changing. No, I said slowly. And maybe that's exactly what we need. I turned to Bethany. A plan forming. Are you with me? I asked. Really with me? Because what I'm thinking could change everything. She hesitated for a moment, then nodded firmly. I'm in. Whatever it takes. As we bent our heads together, plotting our next move, I felt a strange mix of fear and exhilaration. The road ahead would be difficult, but for the first time in months, I felt a glimmer of hope. Eric had no idea what was coming. And that was exactly how I wanted it. My hands trembled as I stood on Eric's parents' doorstep, a folder of damning evidence clutched to my chest. I'd known Louise and George for years, but this visit felt like stepping into enemy territory. Louise answered, her face lighting up. Annabelle, dear, what a lovely surprise. I forced a smile. Louise, we need to talk. It's about Eric. Her expression faltered. Is everything all right? No, I said softly. It's not. Inside, I spread the photos across their coffee table, Eric and Bethany together, text messages, bank statements showing suspicious transactions. Louise's hand flew to her mouth while George's face darkened with each revelation. There's more, I said, my voice shaking. Bethany's pregnant. Eric's the father. Louise collapsed onto the sofa, her shoulders heaving with silent sobs. George paced the room, muttering under his breath. How long? Louise finally asked. A year, at least, I replied. Maybe longer. George slammed his fist on the table, making us both jump. I'll kill him, he growled. My own son, how could he? I touched his arm gently. There's something else you should know. I took a deep breath. Eric's been... violent. He threatened me when I confronted him. Louise's head snapped up, her eyes wide with horror. No, she whispered. Not my Eric. As if on cue, the front door burst open. Eric strode in, his face contorted with rage. What the hell is going on here? For a moment, no one spoke. Then Louise stood, her small frame shaking with fury. How dare you? she hissed. How dare you come into this house after what you've done? Eric's eyes darted between us, realization dawning. Annabelle? He snarled. You had no right. She had every right, George roared, stepping between us. You're the one who's destroyed this family, boy. Eric lunged forward, but George caught him by the shirt collar. Don't you dare, he warned. You're not the son we raised. You're not our son anymore. Louise's anguished cry pierced the air. He's right, she sobbed. I don't know who you are, but you're not my Eric. I watched, stunned as Eric's world crumbled around him. His parents' rejection seemed to hit him harder than any accusation I could have made. Mom, he pleaded. Dad, please, let me explain. There's nothing to explain, George said coldly. Get out of our house, now. As Eric turned to leave, his eyes met mine. The hatred I saw there chilled me to the bone. This isn't over, he hissed. The door slammed behind him, leaving us in stunned silence. Louise crumpled to the floor, her body racked with sobs. I knelt beside her, my own tears falling freely. I'm so sorry, I whispered. I never wanted this to happen. George helped Louise to the couch, then turned to me. No, Annabelle, we're the ones who should be sorry. We had no idea. Louise grasped my hand. What can we do? How can we help? I hesitated, then decided to lay all my cards on the table. I'm selling the house, I said. I need to start over, somewhere Eric can't find me. They exchanged a glance, then George nodded firmly. We'll help. Whatever you need. As we sat there, planning my escape and Eric's comeuppance, I felt a strange mix of grief and relief. I'd lost my husband, but I'd gained unexpected allies. My phone buzzed, a text from Bethany. Eric's on the warpath. He knows we've been talking. What do we do? I looked up at Louise and George, their faces etched with concern and determination. In that moment, I knew what I had to do next. We end this, I said, my voice stronger than I felt. Once and for all. I typed a quick reply to Bethany. Meet me at the house in an hour. Bring everything you have on Eric. It's time to take control. As I hit send, I felt a surge of adrenaline. The stakes had never been higher, but for the first time, I truly believed I could win this fight.
My heart raced as I paced the living room, waiting for Bethany to arrive. The house that had once been my sanctuary now felt like a trap, filled with memories of Eric's betrayal. When the doorbell rang, I nearly jumped out of my skin. Bethany stood on the porch, her face pale and drawn. Annabelle, I'm so sorry, she began, but I cut her off. Not now. We need to focus. I ushered her inside, glancing nervously at the street. Did anyone see you come here? She shook her head. I don't think so. Annabelle, what's going on? Eric's been calling me non-stop, threatening. I know, I interrupted. That's why we need to end this. Today. I laid out my plan, watching Bethany's eyes widen with each detail. When I finished, she sat in stunned silence. It's risky, she finally said. It's our only chance, I replied. Are you with me? After a moment's hesitation, she nodded. I'm in. We spent the next hour preparing, gathering evidence and stealing our nerves. As I set up my laptop for the video call, my phone buzzed. A text from Eric. On my way home, we need to talk. I exchanged a glance with Bethany. It's time. With trembling fingers, I dialed Eric's number, putting the call on speaker. He answered on the first ring. Where the hell are you? He snarled. I'm at home, I said, fighting to keep my voice steady. And I'm not alone. There was a pause. What do you mean? Bethany's here, Eric, and we know everything. I could hear his sharp intake of breath. Don't do anything stupid, Annabelle. I'm almost there. Good, I said, because we have a lot to discuss. I ended the call and turned to Bethany. Ready? She nodded, her face set with determination. Minutes later, we heard Eric's car pull into the driveway. The front door slammed open and he stormed into the living room, his face contorted with rage. What the hell is going on? He demanded. I stood my ground. It's over, Eric. We know about your lies, your manipulation, all of it. His eyes darted between us. I don't know what you think you know, but— Save it, Bethany cut in. We've compared notes. We know you've been playing us both. Eric's facade cracked. You don't understand, he pleaded. I love you both. I never meant to hurt anyone. I laughed bitterly. Love? Is that what you call this? I gestured to the bruise on my arm from our last confrontation. Eric's eyes narrowed. You pushed me, he hissed. If you had just left well enough alone. Enough, I shouted. No more excuses, no more lies. I turned to my laptop and hit a button. Suddenly, the faces of Eric's parents appeared on the screen. Eric stumbled back. Mom? Dad? What? We've heard everything, son, George said, his voice heavy with disappointment. How could you do this? Louise's eyes were filled with tears that we raised you better than this, Eric. As Eric sputtered excuses, I played my final card. There's more, I said, my voice shaking. Tell them, Bethany. Bethany stepped forward, her hand resting protectively on her stomach. I'm pregnant, Eric, and I'm keeping the baby. The room fell silent. Eric's face drained of color as he looked from Bethany to me, then to his parents on the screen. I, I can explain, he stammered. There's nothing to explain, I said firmly. We're done, Eric, all of us. Suddenly, Eric lunged forward, grabbing my arm. You can't do this to me, he shouted. I wrenched away, fear and adrenaline coursing through me. Don't touch me. As Eric advanced, his face twisted with rage, Bethany stepped between us. That's enough, she yelled. You've deceived both of us, Eric. There's no future for us. Any of us. Eric's parents were shouting from the computer screen, begging him to stop. The room spun around me as the full weight of the situation crashed down. Just as Eric reached for me again, a sharp pain ripped through my abdomen. I gasped, doubling over. Annabelle? Bethany's voice sounded far away. What's wrong? I looked up, meeting Eric's shocked gaze. The baby, I whispered. Something's wrong with the baby. As darkness closed in around me, I heard Bethany calling for an ambulance. The last thing I saw was Eric's face, a mix of anger and fear, before everything went black. The harsh fluorescent lights of the hospital corridor burned my eyes as I was rushed through on a gurney. Pain ripped through my abdomen, each contraction more intense than the last. Bethany ran alongside me, her face a mask of worry. Hang in there, Annabelle, she urged. You're going to be okay. I wanted to believe her, but fear gripped my heart. It was too early. The baby wasn't due for weeks. As we burst through the doors of the delivery room, I caught a glimpse of Eric in the waiting area, his face pale and drawn. Our eyes met for a brief moment before the doors swung shut. The next few hours passed in a blur of pain, fear, and frantic medical activity. I heard snatches of conversation, premature labor, 
fetal distress, emergency C-section, but couldn't focus on anything beyond the next breath, the next push. We need to get the baby out now, the doctor's voice cut through the haze. Mrs. Thompson, we're prepping you for surgery. Panic surged through me. No, please, I gasped. I want to do this naturally. The doctor's eyes were kind but firm. I'm sorry, but we don't have a choice. Your baby's life is at risk. As they wheeled me towards the operating room, I saw my parents rushing down the hallway. Mom's eyes were red-rimmed, Dad's jaw set with worry. We're here, sweetheart, Mom called out. We love you. The anesthesia took hold, and I drifted into a fitful sleep. When I awoke, the room was quiet except for the steady beep of monitors. My body felt heavy, disconnected. Annabelle? Bethany's voice came from beside me. Can you hear me? I turned my head, wincing at the movement. The baby? I croaked. Bethany's eyes filled with tears. She's in the NICU. She's so tiny, Annabelle, but she's fighting. Relief and fear warred within me. My daughter was alive, but not out of danger. I want to see her, I said, trying to sit up. Soon, Bethany promised. The doctors want you to rest first. As if summoned by our conversation, a nurse entered, followed by... Eric. My body tensed instinctively. That's what are you doing here? I hissed. Eric held up his hands. I just wanted to make sure you and the baby were okay. We're fine, I snapped. No thanks to you. The nurse looked between us, sensing the tension. Mr. Thompson, perhaps you should wait outside. Eric hesitated, then, then nodded. But before he left, he turned back to me. Annabelle, I know I've made terrible mistakes, but seeing you like this, I realize what really matters. Can we talk, please? For a moment, I was tempted. The familiar pull of our shared history, the dream of what our family could have been, tugged at my heart. But then I remembered the lies, the betrayal, the fear. Our marriage is over, Eric, I said, my voice stronger than I felt. There's no turning back. The only thing that matters now is our daughter. Eric's face crumpled, but I steeled myself against pity. I think you should go, I said quietly. As Eric left, Bethany squeezed my hand. You did it, she whispered. You stood up to him. I nodded, exhausted but determined. It's time to focus on the future, my daughter's future. Just then the doctor entered. Mrs. Thompson, would you like to meet your daughter now? My heart leapt. Yes, please. As they wheeled me to the NICU, I felt a mix of emotions I couldn't quite name. Fear for my tiny, fragile baby. Anger at Eric for putting us through this stress. Relief that the confrontation was over, and underneath it all, a growing sense of strength. When I saw her for the first time, so small in her incubator, tubes and wires everywhere, I felt my world shift. Nothing else mattered. Not Eric's betrayal. Not the drama of the past few months. All that mattered was this tiny fighter. My daughter. I pressed my hand against the incubator, tears streaming down my face. Hello, little one, I whispered. I'm your mom. And I promise, no matter what happens, I'll always be here for you. In that moment, I knew. Whatever challenges lay ahead, whatever Eric might try to do, I would face them. For her. For us. Our new life was just beginning. Six months after that harrowing night in the hospital, I stood in the nursery of my new home, cradling my daughter Lily. The soft glow of the nightlight illuminated her peaceful face as I rocked her gently. A quiet knock at the door made me turn. Bethany stood there, her own baby bump now prominently visible. "'Need any help?' she whispered. I shook my head, smiling. We're good. How are you feeling? Like a beached whale, she chuckled softly. But happy. As I laid Lily in her crib, I marveled at how much had changed. The house we now shared was smaller than my old one, but it was filled with more love and laughter than I'd known in years. We made our way to the living room, where the remnants of our housewarming party still lingered. My parents had insisted on throwing it, a celebration of new beginnings. I still can't believe we're doing this, Bethany said, sinking onto the couch. If someone had told me a year ago that we'd be living together, raising our kids. I know, I agreed. It's not exactly how I pictured my life turning out, but honestly, I wouldn't change it for the world. The sound of a car pulling up made us both tense. We exchanged a glance, knowing who it must be. I'll get it, I said, squaring my shoulders. Eric stood on the porch, looking uncomfortable. I'm here to drop off the last of the divorce papers, he said, not quite meeting my eyes. I took the envelope, feeling a mix of emotions. Anger, yes, but also a strange sense of pity. Eric looked lost, diminished somehow. How's Lily? he asked hesitantly. She's perfect, I replied. 
growing stronger every day. He nodded, then glanced past me to where Bethany stood in the doorway, his face twisted with regret. I'm sorry, he said softly. To both of you, I know it doesn't change anything, but I truly am sorry. For a moment I was tempted to slam the door in his face, but then I thought of Lily, of the future I wanted for her. A future free from bitterness and resentment. Thank you for saying that, I said finally. I hope you find peace, Eric, and I hope you'll be a good father to Lily, even if we can't be together. He nodded, blinking back tears. I'll try. I promise I'll try. As Eric drove away, Bethany came to stand beside me. You okay? she asked, putting an arm around my shoulders. I took a deep breath, feeling a weight lift that I hadn't even realized I'd been carrying. Yeah, I said. I really am. We went back inside, where I carefully placed the divorce papers on the coffee table. They represented the end of one chapter, but the beginning of so many more. You know, Bethany said thoughtfully, a year ago, I thought I'd lost everything. My relationship, my best friend, my future. But now— Now we're building something even better, I finished for her. She smiled, her eyes shining. Together we can build a better life for our kids, for ourselves. As if on cue, Lily's cry echoed from the nursery. I stood up, ready to go to her, but Bethany waved me off. I've got this, she said. You rest. Watching her waddle down the hall, I felt a surge of affection and gratitude. We'd been through hell, Bethany and I, but we'd come out stronger. We'd created a family of our own choosing, built on trust, understanding, and shared experiences. I picked up a framed photo from the side table, Lily and me in the hospital, surrounded by my parents, Bethany, and even Eric's parents. Louise and George had become unexpected allies, doting grandparents determined to make up for their son's mistakes. The future wasn't perfect or certain. There would be challenges ahead. Co-parenting with Eric, helping Bethany through her pregnancy, juggling work and motherhood. But for the first time in a long time, I felt ready to face whatever came our way, as Bethany's soft lullaby drifted from the nursery, I closed my eyes and smiled. This was home, this was family, and together we were unbreakable.